Welcome back to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we answer all of your tech-related questions that you've been leaving under our videos using the hashtag AskGCNTech. And we're going to get right into it with the first question in from John. Hi, just wondering, why don't pro riders use a large disc brake rotor like on mountain bikes? Just curious, he says, just with curious. two emojis like this. Yeah. Um, so it's all about a combined system weight. So that's the, the bike and the rider and all the equipment, and quite simply, a mountain bike is far heavier than a road bike, hence why you have the larger disc brake rotors because it adds a little bit of stopping power. Additionally to that, road bikes aren't really designed with that size of disc brake roads in mind. And also, uh, disc brake bikes tend to be a little bit heavier than rim brakes, so by adding a bigger rotor, you'll be adding a tiny bit more weight, but you know, professional road riders, they want to keep the weight of the bike down. Also, um, road bikes look better with smaller rotors. That is a fact. Do they? Yeah, I think so. Right, next question in is from Tony Lin, who says, Hi, Alex slash Ollie. I'll add slash man on in there. I can they say go. they have a short question. Does road clipless pedals platform area size matter? Thanks. I don't think it is that crucial, especially no. if you've got um, a modern carbon fiber sold shoe. It, yeah. is, it is a good question because cycling shoes, they do tend to be all quite stiff and sturdy these days so the um, surface size of the pedal doesn't really matter and if you think of all the different like style of pedals you can get from the speed bay pedals which are like a lollipop size which are absolutely tiny no surface area at all and then obviously the shimano pedals are a little bit bigger but i think as long as you've got a good cycling shoe then the surface area yeah that's like one matter. of the key things i think yeah. if you've got maybe a more flexible sold cycling shoe that's when you might want to look at the platform size but in terms of the pedals again like you say just take yeah. take what you like because really. if you were to wear a kind of flimsy trainer on a speed bay pedal then you probably would struggle a bit mm. because you just feel feel that lollipop mm. on your foot so no ideal. Yeah, good cycling shoe. right our next question in is from paolo pelliminano i did my I think best that was about that. right yeah it says hi just want to ask if there's any way to convert my road bike from rim brakes to disc brakes. No, I don't think it's particularly think wise. It's, no. Yeah, I actually made a video where I did this um, and I can advise you for three things here. Firstly, it's not easy to do. Secondly, it's not necessarily that safe. And thirdly, it's not very cost effective. I spent far more money modifying a bike than what I could have done buying a fairly entry spare disc brake bike. Mm. Hmm. Next question, Mel, here we go. Next question is in from Simon Wood. Should I be doing maintenance on the rim surface of my aluminium wheels, not disc? Um, no, I don't think there is any sort no, of special maintenance you need to do. So clean. They've suggested on rubbing them down with Scotch Brite or something like that to remove some of the old brake material, but yeah, I don't think you need to do anything. Keep it clean, keep it free of free of grease yeah. um, and, and just also check it for wear. The brake pads as well, make sure you give, when you're cleaning the bikes, make sure you clean the brake pads as well because things can get stuck to them oh, and yeah. um, replacing um, the brake pads when they need to be replaced. Oh, great advice. Would recommend that. <laughs> yeah, nice, good advice that. Um, next question from Chris Bruce. They say, hi GCN. In my mind, I really want to sand down my carbon gravel bike and give it a shiny new paint job. God, sounds like an ideal thing for you. I'm pretty handy and I've got good space to do it, so I think it might be a good idea. Problem is, when I say it out loud, it seems like a terrible <laughs> idea and may well end up looking worse. What do you think about it? Definitely do it. Bite the bullet and do it. It will be the best thing you've ever done, giving your bike a totally new life. and. It is quite scary thinking about spray painting the bike. It is quite a big job. But as long as you do your research, look into it, get all the right products, um, and be very patient with it and trust the process, it will turn out amazingly. I actually did, probably over a year ago now, I spray painted my old bike. I had no idea what I was doing. I researched it, asked the professionals for help, um, and did a video on it, and it turned out so much better than I ever could have imagined. And you'll be surprised um, of the colour varieties you can have, like I had a nice sparkly purpley, green, chromey colour um, and some really good finishes as well as long as you get um, you know, a good top coat and it's, it's not actually that expensive, um, the paint I bought and I thought it was going to cost a lot more for a decent paint but it was... To this day I'm still was, jealous of that paint job on that bike. It was, it was very nice. I might get you to paint my bike one day. Yeah. Um, next question in is from g.west23 who says Hi everyone, another low tech question here. How do I know when I'm supposed to change my Pirelli P0s? I've been asking myself for a long time 
and well, they say they found out today by having a blown tire. So, oh, not ideal. The no. easiest way to check um, the wear on your tires. Nearly all tires have a little tread wear indicator Very on. Very easy way to check. Actually. Yeah, and I mean specifically, you said the Pirelli P zeros. They actually have these little dots. There's about four of them dotted around the tire. Basically, it's like a little divot, and when that's worn smooth and you can't see it. It means you've worn away all of that bit of tread and it's time to replace your tyre. Get some new tyres. Mm, simple. Yeah. Next up, um, question in from Dr. Poop. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Poop and Hearts. Poop and Hearts. Um, I'm replacing my chain, but the new chain I bought has a quick link and my old chain hasn't. When measuring the length, um, including the quick link, do I make a new chain? Do the I make length. the new chain the same length as the old chain? Oh yes, make it the same length. You don't need to make any changes because no. you're using a quick link. Overall, include the quick link in the length of the chain. Make sure it's all the same. And provided your chain was the correct length in the first instance, you'll have no problems whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. easy. No, no need to do anything special. What have we got next? Oh, it's our last question. Oh. Um, this week, last question for this week's GCN Tech Link, which is from Gunter Mahens Mahasa. Apologies. God, I'm terrible at the names, I'm really sorry. Uh, they say, can I use um, a rim brake on rims without a braking line? I presume I mean a braking surface as yeah. well. Basically, so they're converting their fixed gear to a road bike, spent all of their money on the drivetrain, but they want to use the old fixed, um, fixed gear rims which don't have any brake tracks. Is this okay? Do I really have to wait to save some money up and spend on some new hubs and rims? Unfortunately, yes. yes. Um, yes. Yeah, unfortunately you do. There's, it's, it's not advisable using a wheel which hasn't been designed with a braking surface. It's not going to work correctly. It's not the same angle that the pads sit at. It's not reinforced. It's not safe. Basically, you're going to have to save your money up, aren't you? Yeah, unfortunately. It's just not, not designed for that. You'll, you'll be just... Breaking the on the wrong bit. might not even fit on the yeah. actual wheel surface correctly and they're probably going to wear down a lot quicker because it hasn't got the proper surface. Yeah. Do yourself a favour, save your pennies up, yeah. get the right products in the first time and you'll thank us for that little bit of advice. That is it for this week's yeah. GCN Tech Clinic. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, give this video a big thumbs up and let us know in the comments section down below if you've got any other questions you'd like us to answer and I guess we'll see you next week. Yeah. Are you going to be back in next week? I might be, who oh. knows? Mm, cool.